Welcome. This is Artist on Art. I am your host, Nada Milkovich, and I'm here in the studio today, another beautiful Santa Cruz day with Claire Thorson. Claire Thorson is a local, yeah, she's, she's well, she teaches here in the area. She's in the South County. No, we're starting to get, no, not really. Monterey County. Monterey County. There you go. Claire Thorson is a painter, educator, and we are here to celebrate the launch of your exhibition and it's a little different folks um this painter drawer artist is on the internet she's on a museum that is on the internet now you may recall i had the wonderful pleasure of speaking with betsy anderson betsy anderson who is the director of this online, one of only three, I believe, in the world, this online museum, and it is Museo Eduardo Carrillo. Eduardo was a painter, a very famous artist here in the area. He taught up here at UCSC, and this museum is in his honor, or let's say inspired by his work. Mostly say? about his work and his uh, career. It's uh, not just a website. It is a museum, as Maya is saying. And uh, it uh, makes his legacy visible, uh, the work that he did and who he was as a person. There's a lot of beautiful things to see on the website, so you should definitely visit it. And so tell us, uh, this is one of, I know that Betsy was on in the summer when it was the first exhibition on the museum Museo Eduardo Carrillo website which you can go to museoeduardocarrillo.org to see it Mm -hmm. to see the museum itself Um, what is it that makes it a museum an online museum well I'm not an expert about the museum but uh, it is um, there's biographical information, there's photos of Eduardo, there's uh, articles about him. So it's a little more than a website would normally be. And last uh, summer, I think, they launched their first uh, uh, exhibition uh, of uh, contemporary artists. It's called On View. It's an ongoing series. They've, I'm, I'm the third artist to be presented in the series, so I'm really pleased to be part of the whole thing. Um, I've known about the museo since they started some years ago, so it's really nice to be involved this way. And I've been watching the progress of um, the work that Allison and Betsy have been doing to uh, get to make Eduardo's work visible and accessible to a really broad audience. Well, I hear there's a documentary in the works uh, about uh, Eduardo Carrillo, uh, Eduardo lived here in Santa Cruz County, and his uh, family is continuing his legacy. It's an incredible uh, amount of work that he's done. He's also done uh, very large museum uh, murals as well. Mm-hmm. So the Museo Eduardo Carrillo is uh, is here online. Um, like I said, at museoeduardocarrillo.org. And then if you do forward slash on dash view, you will get to see their third artist, as Claire was saying, um, the art of Claire Thorson. It's called Desire and Inquiry. And you, what you will find are photographs of both paintings and drawings. Paintings and drawings, uh and also an essay by Tom Medeiros, and he coined the title, so we're really grateful to, for, to Tom for coining the title. <laughs> Desire and Inquiry. Yes. So well, maybe we can talk just a little bit about the title, but before we do that, Claire, I want to just mention to our audience that you are, as I m- mentioned, a local educator. You teach at Cabrillo um, College. You've been teaching there for a while. Is that right? That's right. I've been there about eight years. I teach... Usually I teach drawing, sometimes I teach life drawing, sometimes I teach other things. Uh, Design. Design, yes. And so life drawing is figure drawing? Figure drawing, that's right. And then you also teach at MPC? Monterey Peninsula College, yes. I teach figure drawing, usually painting, 
sometimes and other classes as well. And so where's the Monterey Peninsula College? It's right near downtown on Fremont. It's In um, Monterey? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. And how long have you been teaching there? About eight years. I did my graduate education from 2002 to 2005 and started teaching immediately after that. Oh, wonderful. So, Claire, you are uh, a painter. Sometimes your paintings have, and your drawings, have figures in them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's no figures. Sometimes they're completely abstract. And tell us a little bit about your approach to painting. Do do you have an idea, like, I'm going to paint a figure drawing or a figure painting, or I'm going to attack this and make an abstract painting. How does that work for you? Well, I have been figure drawing for a long time. It goes along with teaching figure drawing, and I think figure drawing is a great core um, practice. It it just uh, sets you up to observe something and to have something very specific, some very specific nature to... um, to respond to and in figure drawing I feel like the field is wide open I can experiment and uh, use different colors and different marks and different composition to uh, direct the image in different ways Uh, lately and this hasn't always been true I've done some direct painting from the figure but lately my work has been more imagined more invented I still feel like it's informed by the figure, that the figure is still there in the painting, and that my drawing experience has created uh, a kind of internal understanding of the figure. It's an internal experience of maybe proportion or position or sweep of a curve, and these things get translated more abstractly in the paintings I'm doing right now. So would you say that having this disconnected experience from drawing the figure and then painting the figure after having this imaginative moment with your uh, idea of what you're about to create, would you say that that period is a mediated period where it does disconnect you from the original person in, into something else? That's a complicated question. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm, sorry. I'm glad you even followed it. <laughs> what yeah. am I trying to say there? Uh, well, I think that there are some, some sort of perennial concerns or perennial formal aspects of the figure. And then there is the way that figure, the figure plays into a narrative context. And, you know, that's age old. The figure's been the central element in narrative painting for a long time. So when you say narrative painting, you're saying a painting that conveys a story? Right. So I think for some people, uh, these abstractions uh, may not seem so immediately narrative, but they have a narrative quality for me. And that sometimes happens because there's more than one figure being presented or suggested or implied or there's a relationship between elements like figurative elements um, and the surrounding space and so there might be a shape of a shadow that enters into the drawing as more uh, let's say, um, less in the background and more in the foreground, or that kind of thing. You're playing. Yeah, there are those kind of spaces in these paintings. That's definitely true. And there's some other spatial or abstract qualities um, that have to do with pressure or compression or, um, let's see, uh, that forward and back feeling that you were just talking about. Uh, they, they have the push and pull with that for, forward and back mm-hmm. um, that maybe is achieved uh, more strong with an abstract painting. Maybe it's, maybe it's a little harder to use a figure figure drawing um, where the figure plays the main, like you're saying, the main narrative. The, when you see a figure painting, you're looking at the figure. And the ability to push and pull the figure between itself and the background is kind of limited because it's the figure. It's a whole, right? 
Right, and you are more um, involved in what the image is about. And I would say in these paintings or in abstract work, sometimes you're more involved or more engaged with how the space feels or or how um, what the color's doing rather than what it's depicting. So there's some relationship there for sure. I don't feel like they're completely separate or disconnected, but they are a little bit different. The emphasis is different. So Claire, I, I would say that's probably one of the biggest questions that I have seen with people that don't study art, that aren't art theorists or have you know have some ideas on this and they go to the museum and they get in front of let's say an abstract painter who's just big fields of color or maybe there's two colors and one is a small rectangular color and there's another color above it and without having been educated on understanding that what he was doing at that part of his career was really looking at how fields of colors play with one another and how you get this push and pull between different colors and and so that that is actually the narrative that's the story he's simply looking at the color and perhaps maybe he wants us to feel something when we see those colors or have this conflict uh, between the fields. Right. I think Rothko is a good example. And um, he would have described or had has described his work as figurative. Rothko uh, considers his... He, I Some think, of them. I'm sure he has a range of... I'm sure he had a range of feelings about what his work was about. I'm sure most artists do, but he has described his work as figurative. That's interesting. And that has to do with the scale of it, partly. So, yeah, it's that experience of, of push and pull, of higher and lower, of, of closer and farther away, of, of ease or tension, all those things of cool and hot... Right, right, right. All of those things have, an, uh, an, I think, a very visceral impact on me. Uh, and painters of Rothko's era are important to me. So that, that's what you would say to somebody if you're in a museum and you're standing in front of maybe your painting. And somebody says, what does it mean? I don't understand. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing I can grasp in it. There's no figure. There's no, no recognizable. There's no landscape. Mm -hmm. um, that's what you would say to them? That's not the only thing I would say. I would say that most abstraction, and not all abstraction, and certainly the work I do, comes from something in particular. It starts with the particular experience. It may be a visual experience, or it may be some other kind of experience. But it's moving from something real, and it's expressing something real. So, though it may not be recognizable in terms of a known object, it's still recognizable on some level as an experience. So, if I'm talking about a figure that's sleeping or two figures that are close together or, um, or a world that seems shattered or... Uh, Oh, you know, figures that seem dislocated. I can express that perhaps in a stronger way, or I can feel it in a stronger way, abstractly. Abstractly. You're listening to Claire Thorson. She's joining me today on Artist on Art here at KZSC Santa Cruz. Claire Thorson is a local painter, drawer, educator of the art. Um, here at Cabrillo College, as well as the Mon Monterey Peninsula College, she teaches figure painting or figure drawing, which is basically when you get to have a model and you and you paint from a real person in front of you. And she also teaches design and drawing and painting at the Monterey Peninsula College. Uh, you use uh, acrylics, is that right? Uh, my canvases are oils. I use acrylic as a drawing medium usually. Ah. A little bit in mixed media drawings. I don't usually paint with acrylic. So I have the pleasure of looking at two of your paintings that are on your postcard commemorating your on uh, just today launch of the online exhibition presented by the Museo Eduardo Carrillo uh, online at museoeduardocarrillo.org. And the name of the exhibition is called Desire and Inquiry, which was an appreciation by Tom Medeiros. I want to talk to that 
just for a second. But there are two paintings that are represented on the the postcard, and they are oil on canvas, and they're 60 by 48 inches. That means they're five by four feet. Those are large paintings. There has been a lot of paint that went in to, to fill in this up here. One is called Rest, and the other is called Lost Touch. And your paintings are very colorful. Um, there's some primary colors in it. There's also um, some hues, some pastel colors. Um, they are abstract, both of them, and, and yet they're similar. They were done very close in time, and there are two of 16 images that are presented in the show that's online now. And the size is important to me. The scale of the paintings is important to me. I like working uh, kind of body size. And I feel like I can uh, move the paint with more vigor, and uh, I can uh, really sort of walk into the surface of the painting. So this is where performance art enters into the painting realm. <laughs> yeah, it is physical, for sure. It's well, definitely yeah. physical. When it's yeah. that big, heck yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us about desire and inquiry. So Tom looked at your paintings at the, at the set and said, aha. Uh -huh desire and inquiry. I don't know how he thought of it. Uh, I asked Tom to write the essay because he knows my work and we paint together and draw together. And I like Tom's writing. Uh, he reads a lot. He's well-spoken. So it was nice to... Uh, I was, he was the first person I thought of and he agreed to write the essay. So at a time when I was not feeling especially verbal, hard to believe, but uh, it was really great that Tom came up with some words. I had trouble coming up with titles, and uh, he wrote a nice essay, I think you'll enjoy it, uh, which I, I think the title, Desire and Inquiry, expresses something that feels good to me, close. It feels close to me. Uh, I do ask a lot of questions when I paint, and there is a kind of yearning that goes on in painting to get something in there, to, to get that multitude of feelings and senses and... Uh, thought into the painting. So I'm happy with the title. And so, you'll see in his work where where in the essay itself how it how he uses that title. So you can get the essay at museo eduardo carrillo dot o r g forward slash on dash view and there you will be able to see both paintings and drawings by Claire Thorson and an essay uh, Desire and Query and Appreciation by Tom Medeiros. You will also uh, be reminded that there is a Museo Eduardo Carrillo here on campus over in the art department um, for the senior art students to have their installations. Uh, I believe they're chosen, and if you're a chosen senior artist, you get to have the space to fill in any way you want. Um, I think it's at least a week or two weeks that they're up. It's um, one of the galleries over at Baskin. It's right? a very tiny gallery. Right. It's I had a, my senior show there, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a wonderful place, and I've seen some incredible art uh, displayed in the Ed Eduardo Carrillo uh, gallery here at UCSC. Claire Thorson, you are also, you have an exhibition um, in Seaside. Right. I have some drawings up in Seaside at a studio called Open Ground Studio. It's a, a community printmaking studio. It's relatively new. They just opened in May, and they are getting classes up and running, and I'm teaching a workshop there this weekend. It's full on the mixed-media figure, so I have some big mixed-media figures up, and um, I hope you'll go down and see them and check out the space. It's great what they're doing down there for the community of Seaside and for Monterey County. And this exhibition will be up until February 22nd at the Open Grounds Studios. I also want to bring your attention that you have your own website, and it's Claire Thorson, C-L-A-I-R-E Thorson, T-H-O-R-S-O-N dot com. And you also have quite a few presentations of your paintings. Right. There's paintings and drawings on my website, and it's linked to this show, or you can Google my name, and it'll come up. Paintings and drawings, that's what I do. Yeah, that's what I put on my website. <laughs> yeah. I have a blog, too. There are some uh, blog entries you can read.
Now, what's interesting to me is this latest, uh, I've had the pleasure of seeing your work. Uh, you will have a video presentation uh, that will hopefully encapsulate the entire process of creating a, a work of art um, by you. And um, we're going to see that on the Museo Eduardo Carrillo uh, exhibition, a part of the exhibition Desire and Inquiry, the Art of Claire Thorson. And you have been questioning or ruminating, how would you say it, about a specific uh, performance uh, involving water? Will you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, that's right. Uh, over the break, over the January break, I was uh, looking at newspaper photos, which I sometimes do to uh, look for figures or for narratives that interest me. And it was um, early January, and I ran across some beautiful photos, uh, which I began to select from, of uh, Epiphany in Eastern Europe. So... Um, these are. This is an occasion when people, on a mass level, or in, go into the icy waters uh, to celebrate. Uh, I think it's January seventh. Yeah, I think it's to celebrate the um, three kings. Uh, but what's what's great about the photos is that there are several different rituals, but groups of people actually get into rivers or into icy lakes and take a plunge in the middle of January or early in January. And I love to swim, and I love the um, the experience of being in a big body of water, and I felt that that celebration probably uh, represented for me personally some kind of important uh, connection to something larger. I'm not very religious at this point, but there's something pretty great about all these people deciding to get in the water on January 6th and oh, take a dunk. Or I think it's the 6th. Uh, I might have that wrong. No, no, it's either the 6th or the 7th. I think you're right. I think it's yeah. the 6th. And it's uh, there's some great photos. None of them translated exactly into a painting for me, but that's all right. I just need to live with them and draw them, draw them uh, over and over again and change things around uh, compositionally, and many different kinds of stories come out of that drawing process for me. And I have some of those drawings down in Seaside. They're pretty exploratory right now. They're, in a way, preparatory to making a large painting, although I don't have an exact drawing from which I will make a painting. Again, it's more that internal experience of what it might mean to um, enter the water. A cold. <laughs> a cold water, yeah. So I went swimming on January 4th. That was my uh, my salute to that occasion. And it was cold. <laughs> it's definitely cold. So really working your inquiry physically and emotionally and metaphysically. And yeah, there's. Um, it's hard to say where that whole idea will go or if it will really surface in a painting, but it's it, it has to persist for a while, and I have to work with it for a while before it becomes part of the painting process, or successfully part of the painting process, so we'll see where that goes. Claire Thorson, thank you so much for coming on Thanks and for having me. explaining to us a little bit about how to approach abstract painting and drawings through looking at your own work, um, but you do have figurative also. There's a wide range of paintings and drawings that people will be able to see right now yeah, continue. online, museoeduardocarrillo.org. Congratulations to being the third artist to be exhibited on a very unique online museum, a very unique museum, the Museo Eduardo Carrillo. Mm -hmm. I look forward to reading Tom Medeiros's essay on desire and inquiry, which he was inspired by your work. Yes, thanks for having me on, and thanks to Betsy Anderson, who facilitates these on-view exhibitions. I'm really honored to be part of the whole endeavor. Thank you. Claire Thorson is a local painter, drawer, educator. She teaches at Cabrillo and at the Monterey Peninsula College in Monterey. And uh, I'm, I'm just really glad to have been able to talk with you today.
Uh, please stay tuned uh, for Dixie Lee Mills, and um, we're going to talk about the Fringe Festival, the Santa Cruz Fringe Festival. So sit back and relax. Have fun, everybody.